In the majority of sports, people will find out pretty quickly whether their ability is good enough. A player can have one attribute that outweighs all of his other bad ones and still be a threat. So whether you're built for speed, built for strength, or just have the vision and mindset of a professional, that alone can carry a pretty decent career. However, when it comes to golf, we're all born to lose. We find our strengths along the way, unlocking levels that get us to the next stage, but never have an end. Many give up along the way and only the most dedicated make it to the top of the pile. In the 80s, Burbank, California was well underway to being called the media capital of the world. Huge media companies began dropping their anchors in the city and stars began being produced on the daily. John Homer was currently acting on Broadway in New York City, but saw the potential for success if he moved to LA. He began acting and also began teaching on the side. With the critical success and the notoriety that came from coaching Kirsten Dunst, John's client list expanded to an impressive who's who of Hollywood stars. With his career booming and staying away from the magnetic pull of the Hollywood lifestyle, John met Bonnie Milstein, an office manager working at Valley Produce Market. The pair fell in love and shortly after gave birth to their first child, John Max Homer. Coming from a no-golf background, Max relied heavily on his father introducing him to the game. Max's dad liked to finish up at work and head down to Griffith Park Golf Range and thrash balls as hard as he could to shake off any working stress. Max began joining his dad on an evening, and this is where the first cog started turning. From the range, the next stop was the golf course, and Burbank had plenty to choose from. First up was Vista Valencia Golf Club, a public golf course with an 18-hole course, 9-hole par 3 course, fully equipped driving range and practice area, the perfect hotspot for a kid to blossom. Max got his money's worth out of that course and even met lifelong friend and now caddy Joe Greenier who holds the course record for the par 3 course. As Max grew and started to play more regularly, he started to put his game to the test playing other juniors in competition all around California. He joined the SCPGA and began playing on the Toyota Tour, which had an impressive history of names who had come through their ranks. During his four-year span on the Junior Tour, Max claimed 18 top 10 finishes, including five wins, and was also selected to represent Southern California on the Junior America Cup team. So Max was good enough, but he wasn't blessed with rich talent from a young age like the other juniors making their way through the scene. At age 16 and attending Valencia High School, Max was still shooting a lot of his rounds in the 80s and had an average round of 73.7 in 2009. That scoring average was good enough though to become a four-time first-team All-Foothill League selection and 2009 Foothill MVP before graduating. After receiving a scholarship, Max then enrolled into the University of California where he would study consumer behavior. His time in Berkeley was a progressive one, every year just getting a little bit better. His first year saw him reach the US Amateur quarterfinals before eventually losing to Cal teammate and reigning champion, Am Byung Hun. He finished that season ranked fourth in California, 33rd in the US, 78th in the World Amateur Rankings with a scoring average of 72.2. His second year saw him take leaps and bounds, becoming a third team Ping Division I All-American, second team All-Pac-12 in Ping Division I All-West Region. This hard work he was putting in also saw him pick up a win at the Silicon Valley Amateur with a score of 63 and 70. At the end of the 2012 season, Max finished the year ranked 5th in California, 18th in the US, 50th in the world, and with a scoring average of 71.2. In his senior year and another improved season average of 70.6, Max finally implemented himself on the big stage of the amateur scene. With an opening round of 61, 9 under par, Max broke the course record at the North Course at Los Angeles Country Club and tied the lowest round posted in the US. He'd go on to win the Pac-12 Championship, followed by the 2013 NCAA Division I Men's Golf Championship. Those wins saw him invited to play at the 2013 US Open as an amateur but didn't make the cut and was then selected to play on the 2013 Walker Cup team. His final amateur rankings saw him finish 19th nationally, 1st team All-Pac-12, 17th on the final Palmer Cup ranking, 1st team All-American and to the All-Nicholas team. After winning the Walker Cup, Homer turned pro and it wasn't long before he was competing with the big boys. He was invited to play at the Fries.com Open at Corda Valley Golf Club where he put his name out there straight away for people to see. He finished tied ninth in his first pro event, racking up a nice $135,000 prize fund. With that win, he was then invited to several other PGA Tour events through sponsor exemptions and tournament invites, but soon found out the big league wasn't going to be as plain sailing as he first thought, missing four of the next six cuts. With his head softly floating back down to earth and plan B being utilized quicker than he first anticipated, 
Max finished tied sixth at the Web.com Tour qualifying school. With his season ahead planned out for him, Max could now get back to what he does best. He now knew there was another level he needed to reach. Just five tournaments into the 2014 season and coming off the back of a top 10 finish, Max won his first professional competition at the BMW Charity Pro-Am. With that win and several other good finishes that season, Homer finished 17th in the season money list and therefore earning his PGA Tour card for the 2015 season. So Max had been given another lifeline. He'd done what many people struggled to do once, and this time, he needed to take advantage. The start wasn't that bad. He had a couple good finishes and even managed a tied sixth at the Sony Open, winning a staggering $163,000. But unfortunately for Max, just as soon as he proved he could compete at the top, that top 10 would be his only for the season. From there, it was a long, dreary season of missed cuts and low finishes. From 27 events, he made the cut in 12 and still made a decent purse of $380,000, leaving him 163rd on the FedEx Cup standings. But even that wasn't enough to keep his card, and Max would now be playing his golf on the web.com next season. This was obviously a huge blow. The season wasn't that bad overall, and he just couldn't seem to keep the ball rolling. Nevertheless, he was still early in his career, and all of this was experience. With his new thinking head firmly on, Homer was back to work and feeling as comfortable as ever. His second run at the web.com was split into two halves. The first half was eight events without missing a cut and then being rewarded with his second professional win of his career, cashing in a check of $108,000, which single-handedly got his PGA Tour card back for next year. Just as well, really, because the second half of the season saw him miss 10 out of the next 12 cuts. But like he cared, Max was heading back to the mothership, hoping that this voyage would set sail in the right direction. However, that ship that set sail for the PJ Tour took a wrong turn and got caught up in one of the biggest storms imaginable. The form that Max ended the web.com tour with bled through into the PJ Tour, and on paper, it's horrible to look at. He missed the cut in 15 events out of a possible 17 and earned a devastating $18,000 for the year. The ship was sunk. It took a huge battering along the way and Max was sent back to shore. Feeling defeated, Max took to Twitter. He tweeted, had a few caddies hit me up recently, hoping to team up. They heard they usually get weekends off, which is apparently a great selling point. Even in the worst possible case scenario, Max still found humor. So Max had to sit down with himself once again. He was too good for the web.com, but not good enough for the PGA Tour. But there was no way he could go his whole career yo-yoing between the two. He needed to focus and give himself one last shot. The 2018 web.com tour was packed with fresh young talent, but Max had done it before and he knew he could do it again. The season went as smooth as ever and was probably his most consistent season to date. Albeit no win, Max put together a solid season and scraped through in 26th place on the money list. So it was starting to sound like a broken record, but Max was back again. The only difference this time was nobody was really paying any attention. He wasn't a young kid fresh out of college now, pricking the ears of every pundit. He was a seasoned vet who had been through the trenches. The start was nervy missing the first six cuts, but this is where experience kicks in. He'd been here before, he knew the pain, and he knew he needed to start being aggressive. He picked up a tie 26th at the Waste Management Open, followed by a top 10 at Pebble Beach. And then the results kept coming. Tied 37, tied 20th, tied 42nd, and then bam, Wells Fargo. Max had shown enough. He'd proven he had the game. He'd proven he had the grit, and now the golf gods would answer and crown their new king. The swing looked good, but the putting looked better. One dropped, two dropped, three dropped, and then the last one dropped. With huge emotion and a fist pump to follow, Max Homer had done it. With the win, he received $1.4 million, a two-year extension on his PGA Tour card, as well as spots in the PGA Championship and the 2020 Masters. Max could finally breathe. He had time now. After marrying the love of his life in 2019, the next quest was about to begin. He'd gone from 800 in the world rankings to now just sat outside the top 100. And that was the mission, cement himself inside that top 100. So the job post was out there and Homer was taking interviews. In storms Mark Blackburn. The CV fit and Max was willing to give him a shot. The season was smooth in comparison to others and he was really starting to look like a true PJ Tour player. He played in 21 events, made the cut in 14, finished top 10 in four and top 25 in seven, racking up $1.4 million and finishing 70th in the FedEx Cup standings. Even if his PGA Tour card wasn't secure, that would have been plenty to see him keep his card. So the success had come from Mark putting Max through a Titleist TPI test. And after figuring out Max's body limitations, they worked his swing around them. What this really had an improvement on was Max's wedge game. See, Max could hit it a long way. His game off the tee was fine and his irons were pure. 
But Max said he looked at what DJ did with his game to get to that next level and took a leaf out of his book. Again, the season started pretty solidly, and after a tied seventh at Pebble Beach, Max entered the Genesis Invitational. The week wasn't easy. Max was spraying the ball all over the place and was finding himself in more sand than David Hasselhoff, but the up and downs came one after another, and after stiffing it on the last, had a chance to win. The misread meant they would go to extra time, and after snooking himself behind a tree, it seemed to be all over. After hiking the ball out and surviving to the next hole, Max stuck one in close and Finau flopped. The win was another brilliant example of Max's mindset and believing he could win even though he knew his game wasn't at its best. The season would mark his best yet, racking up $3.5 million from 28 events, making 5 top 10s and 12 top 25s, finishing 35th on the FedEx Cup standings. The season saw him move from 100 in the world to 35th, and Max was becoming a fan favourite. With his game booming and now his social following rising too, Max was the most talked about guy on tour. At the opening tournament of the season, Max put together a stellar performance at the Fortnite Championship. After a late charge on day 4, the golfing gods struck down again on Max. He holed out for Eagle on the par 412 and followed it up with Birdie to take the lead. Again, his putting looked deadly, and Max was making light work of these wins now, taking that to win number 3 on the PGA Tour. He'd win again at the Wells Fargo in May, and then the man who nearly didn't make it was now sitting on 4 PGA Tour victories and another world class season. From 24 events, he had 15 top 25s, 5 top 10s, made $5 million and finished 5th on the Fakers Cup standings. It just didn't seem possible. From describing most professionals' golf careers to now describing a potential Hall of Famer, Max still wasn't slowing down. He defended his title at the Fortnite Championship, which at this point is just rolling off the tongue, and then went to the President's Cup where he helped the US win their 14th President's Cup and won all four matches he played in. To cap a remarkable season and again another progressive year, Max was moving closer to the top 10 in the official golf rankings. Before we get a chance to absorb everything that has just happened, we need to mention one more win. At the Farmers Insurance Open, Sam Ryder started the day five shots clear and Homer was sat in the middle of the pack. But as Ryder started to slip back, Homer began taking charge, and in his first tournament as a dad, and in his home state, Max won. A week later, he'd get a runner-up at the Genesis, and already in this season, Max has won over $7 million. So he wasn't born with bags of talent, and neither was it going to be gifted to him. But what Max has that many don't is courage and determination. He had one goal and never let it slip. After progressing every year from first picking up a golf club, Max still has goals he wants to reach, and I don't see any dream too big right now. He's third in the FedEx Cup standings right now, and seventh in the world. There's no doubt he'll get a Ryder Cup pick, and after his President's Cup performance will definitely be one to watch. But I think now with eight professional wins and six on the PGA Tour, it's got to be a major that's in Max's mind. So just when you think you're past it and can't improve, know that your best game might still be ahead of you. And this time, take a leaf out of Max's book, and never give up.